Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we're going to be doing the second part of our create the best quality, perfect quality, whatever you want to call it, uh, video series. And we're going to focus today on rendering in the best quality. So last episode was actually about uh, finding the right recording settings. And uh, if you want to check that out, please feel free to do so. Uh, also, somebody brought up the fact that uh, the tutorial was like the same as Jack Frags, and it pretty much is. Um, less so for the rendering part, but our differences are are a little bit in that he likes to render in .wmv format, I like to render in .mp4, and we use um, strategies to compensate uh, for the little discrepancies that those uh, codecs bring up. So that said, uh, we're going to be playing around in Sony Vegas Pro 12, which is extremely expensive obviously, but also you can use uh, less less expensive versions of the program as well, and it'll give you the, the same sort of thing. So if you want, you can go down to the uh, the Vegas Pro 12 Edit version. And actually, these are fine too. Like I was using Movie Studio Platinum 12 for a long time. And the, the features that the Sony Vegas Pro really gives you on top of uh, the Movie Studios is just they feel more like convenience than anything else. Anyway, here's... Uh, so let's say that we have a, a video all laid out. And actually, I'll open one. You get to see super secret RHEL stuff. All right, so the first thing we, we want to do, we have our video all laid out. Everything's good to go. I want to select uh, the first frames. So if you just have one track, just select the, uh, the first video frame. So not the audio frame. And I got to thank, uh, actually, we're going to hold control and select them both in this case. And I have to thank uh, Energy One for showing me how to do this because it's, uh, it's helped immensely. But we're going to go select events to end. So it's going to select all of the video tracks that we have available. I actually have a couple more up here, but I'm not too concerned about them. Then we're going to go to switches and disable resample. And what this does is it makes it so you won't get uh, pixelation when the video tries to uh, resample itself when it's mid-render. I don't know why it does it, but uh, but it's definitely a huge issue. And yeah, that's uh, the very, very easy way to fix it. And there's a couple things that will actually cause pixelations within the video, but we'll cover them all. So that's the first thing we need to do, just disable resample. The second thing we need to do is uh, we're going to create some filters. And so I'm going to go into this, uh, this button here, and it's going to put filters on the whole entire track, so I don't have to do it. Uh, piece by piece. And we're going to be using two filters in this. The first one is called uh, Sony Sony Levels. So we're going to go to Sony Levels, open that one up, and there's actually a default or preset setting that's called Computer RGB to Studio RGB, and that's what we're going to be using. Don't need to touch it past that, uh, but I already have this enabled, so I'm actually going to take that off. The second one is Sharpen, uh, Sony Sharpen, and by default it's like 0.5, but we're actually going to use 0.1 and uh, that'll become very important later but what it does is it just sharpens uh, the edges, it sharpens the video the same way you would in uh, Adobe Photoshop. So there's that, just the two filters and we're going to get right into our rendering settings. So go to File, Render As and we want to make a new template. So uh, we're going to base it off of a .mp4 format, so go to main concept avc tag, or I'm sorry, forward slash aac uh, .mv4, .mp4, uh, 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 words are hard today. Going down to internet hd 1080p and open that one up. Now, uh, there's actually a couple windows here. You have this little menu and this uh, this bigger one down here. We're going to scroll down, going to go to customize template, and then we're going to save this as something else. And we're going to adjust all the settings here. And I'm actually going to open up mine uh, just because I have everything laid out. So I'm going to open up this one, customize template. Now this is my my uh, personal template that I use for uh, big, you know, just, I don't know, huge, huge videos. And because of that, we're using we're using something beyond 1920 by 1080 p And anytime you render in, in a screen or a resolution that's bigger than 1920 by 1080p, YouTube interprets it as original quality. So when you go into my videos and you see original quality there, that's what it's doing. But I am recording in 1920 by 1080p. So because that's the screen or my uh, the resolution of my monitor. The reason that we do this, and it might be a placebo effect, but it seems to 
up the overall bitrate allowance for for the video. So when it when you put a video on YouTube, you render it, you know, it looks nice and clean, beautiful. Re uh, upload it on YouTube, and YouTube is going to compress it using uh, VP7 or VP9, which I think they're switching over to if they haven't already. And it it essentially it's supposed to be a very you know fast loading uh, streaming codec or whatever I don't know technical terminology, but it's supposed to make the video look good. It really doesn't. Uh, there's a lot of just um, it dumbs down the quality for sure. So a way to circumvent that is to increase the the bitrate allowance. So we're going here, going here, making it bigger. And there's also um you could, there, there's sizes past this, but this is kind of the next stage up after 1920 by 1080. So that's the custom frame size. Going to profile high, uh, frame rate is 30 flat. So you can actually you type in the frame rate. So it's 30. That's it. Um, it's not in the drop down. That's why I mention it. Allow source to adjust frame rate. Uh, field order none. Progressive scan. Pixel aspect ratio is one. These are what you call square pixels. Number of reference frames is two. And variable bit rate. So the most important thing is this right here. You actually want it to be two pass, which means that you're going to render the video twice. And because of that, it's going to take twice as long to render the video. But what it does is, if you render a video once, it comes out with uh, with dropped frames or with pixelation. And this is going to make sure that that does not happen. So that's very, very important. We're going to cap the maximum bit rate out. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and this, this 24 million is what I like to render on. The average bit rate. And you can drop it down. It's going to create a very big video. Like this video that's uh, it's actually like 8 minutes long. It's going to turn out to 1.3 something gigabytes when we render it. And that's going to have to be uploaded to YouTube. So if you have a a slower internet connection, we can uh, compress the video again, which is what we're going to be talking about in the next episode, or you can just uh, lower the bitrate, which is going to lower the overall quality, supposedly. So going down to there, 24, uh, render using CPU only, and this is uh, this is important. CUDA cores are actually, if you go down to CUDA, it's going to use your NVIDIA graphics card, and that, for some reason, causes a lot of errors. So I wouldn't touch it, just use CPU only. Enable progressive download. Go to audio, we're going to go to, we're going to include it obviously. And uh, 44 is good. Bit rates here, or it's fine at nine, or 192. System, don't touch it. Project, set uh, video rendering quality to best. And that's it. And save the template, press OK, hit render, then wait a long time. And that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. So a couple quick tips after that. Actually, before before you render the video, please do this. Go to, um, I like to use this command line. And uh, I, I think it works. <laughs> it's something I read online, but it's been working for me. So what, it, what YouTube does is that when you upload a video, it's got to upload it, and then it's got to process it. And what this uh, command line, QT fast start, will do is it'll start processing the video while it's uploading, which is going to cut down on the time that it takes to upload uh, and process the video drastically. So we're going to go into, uh, to put down a command line, we're going to go into insert, command, text, parameter is QT fast start. And then uh, you click OK. Actually, the position you want to be zero. So it's going to be right at the beginning of the frame, or the, uh, the video. Then you do that, save it render it that way. Now, last thing is uh, if you have all of your video files on an external hard drive, which is what I do, uh, if you render and you're not constantly accessing that folder for some reason, then the uh, Sony Vegas can lock up and it'll just it'll stop your render. You have to completely do it all over again. And that's, uh, that's actually why I spent nine or more hours rendering the fireworks uh, weapon review sort of thing, because I kept running into this, my uh, hard drive would just stop spinning. So a solution to that is to, for externals at least, is to go download No Sleep HD. And you can just Google this, it should be the first result. You download it, pretty self-explanatory, you just you click on your, uh, your external hard disk, and then uh, just start the No Sleep mode, and while you're, you're rendering. And then when you're done, turn it off, 
because it can degrade uh, or can kill, I guess, the lifespan of your hard drive if you keep it on. Because what it's doing is it's constantly writing and then deleting uh, a small, like, one kilobyte file to it just to keep that hard drive spinning and active. But that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, next episode, we're going to be covering compression. And uh, yeah, that should be it. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.